Good day, students. Today, we are going to discuss Oral Communication, Quarter 1, Module 2. And this is about effective communication, barriers, and strategies. I am Mam Kethel I. Sahonia, your subject teacher. Just a disclaimer, this video presentation is not paid by the Department of Education or sponsored by other agencies. I simply made this video because some of my students requested me to record the lessons. The contents of this video presentation is from the module designed, developed, and reviewed by the Department of Education. This module is published by the Department of Education, which is spearheaded by the Secretary, Leonor Magdulis Briones, and Undersecretary, Juslado M. San Antonio. We also have the development team of the module, the writers, the evaluator, reviewer, illustrator, layout artist, and the management team. Thank you very much for all of your effort. I hope you are all ready to listen and watch this video presentation I made to easily understand your modules with you. Shall we begin? Great! Look at the icon. It says, what I need to know. In this part, this will give you an idea of the skills or competencies you are expected to learn in the module. As senior high school learners in the K-12 curriculum, it is expected from you to have effective communication skills to be able to prepare you for the world of work, entrepreneurship, and pursuing higher education. Moreover, effective communication is considered to be one of the 21st century skills a learner like you should be equipped with to keep up with the rapid pace of today's modern markets. This module is the answer to this call. This module will help you learn how to be an effective communicator and acquire it by describing, identifying barriers, and applying the strategy so to avoid communication breakdown. With these skills, you are now ready to compete globally and face the world with confidence. After going through this module, you are expected to define effective communication, name some common communication barriers, identify strategies to avoid communication breakdown, give the corresponding solution to overcome communication barriers, and write a maximum of 500 words essay on how communication skills help you as a senior high school student cope up with the challenges with school, work, relationships, and social interactions. So before we begin to the lesson proper, you will see an icon on page 7. It says there, what I know. This part includes an activity that aims to check what you already know about the lesson to take. You may answer those questions in a yellow paper. The quiz is on pages 7 to 9. Good luck! All right, let's move on to the lesson proper. So lesson one, effective communication, barriers, and strategies. To be able to communicate effectively is important to a senior high school student. Communication does not only send messages, but it also motivates work, changes perspectives, and provokes reasoning. The absence of communication may result in distorted information and suppress learning. According to Taylor in 2015, learning in school takes effect when we start communicate our thoughts, ideas, and opinions to others. Communication is the process of understanding and sharing information where active listening is a vital part of it. It helps the speaker to become clear and concise in the manner of delivering information. Active listening helps individuals understand data transmitted to him and allows the speaker to feel heard and understood. Effective communication sounds like it should be spontaneous, but oftentimes something goes astray when we try to communicate with others. We express one thing, the other person perceives something else, and confusions, disappointments, and disagreement arise. It can create trouble in your home, school, and work relationships, right? Now, according to Cruz in 2019, communicating more clearly and effectively demands to learn some necessary skills, whether you're trying to improve communication with your parents, teachers, classmates, or the people around you. Learning these skills can intensify your relationship with others, build greater trust and respect, and improve teamwork, problem solving, and overall social and emotional health. 
Moving on to the next slide. In your module, you will see this icon saying what's in. This is a brief drill or review to help you link the current lesson with the previous one. Are you ready? Great. So in your activity one, it is picture analysis. You need to examine the picture and answer the questions stated in your module. Now, based on the image, what can you infer from the picture? You may write your answer in a sheet of paper. And another question is, how can misunderstanding be avoided at work or in school? Again, you may write your answer in a yellow paper. Once you're done, we can now proceed to the next activity. Moving on to the next activity, and this is all about communication breakdown. In your module, you may see two girls having conversation. The names of the character are Flora and Carla. Flora said, Look, this side here is unequal. What do you think, Carla? Carla said, Flora, do you think that's what the doctor meant when he advised you to eat a balanced diet? Based on the dialogue, write your opinion about it. If you are done, then let's proceed to the next slide. In your module, you will see another icon and it says, what is it? This section provides a brief discussion of the lesson. This aims to help you discover and understand new concepts and skills. Let's begin. What is effective communication? Communication is beyond exchanging messages. Effective communication happens when there is an understanding of the emotions and intentions behind the messages. Effective communication is also a give and take process, which is why it's not only how the message is transmitted, but also how it is received and understood by receivers and to make the other person feel heard and understood. Effective communication combines a set of skills, including nonverbal communication, engaged listening, verbal communication, managing stress at the moment, the ability to communicate assertively, and the capacity to recognize and understand own emotions and communications with other people. Effective communication helps deepen connections to others and improve teamwork, decision-making, and problem-solving. It helps one to convey even negative or difficult messages without causing conflict or spoiling trust. While effective communication is a learned skill, it is more effective when it's spontaneous rather than formulaic. Spontaneous means happening in a natural way, while formulaic means containing a verbal formula or a set of words. Barriers to effective communication. According to Hermosa et al. in 2016, the following are various barriers to effective communication that we need to remember to avoid communication breakdown and communicate and deliver messages in a clear way. Number one, language barriers. Language and linguistic ability may act as a barrier to communication. However, even when communicating in the same style, the terminology used in a message may be a barrier if it is not fully understood by the receiver. For example, a nurse or a doctor referring to a common cold as upper respiratory tract infection may not be understood well by a patient. Language barriers may include different language, no clarity in speech, using jargon, and not being specific. Number two, the psychological barriers. The psychological state of the communicators will influence how the message is sent, received, and perceived. For example, if someone is stressed, he or she might be very impatient, which could affect how he sends and receives messages, resulting in misunderstanding. Anger is another example of a psychological barrier to communication when we are angry. It is easy to say things that we may later regret, and also to misinterpret what others are saying. Number three, physiological barriers. 
physiological barriers may result from the receiver's physical state. For example, a receiver with reduced hearing may not grasp a spoken conversation, especially if there is significant background noise. Your grandmother or grandfather may not hear as clearly as your mother or father, thus they need to misunderstand your messages and respond differently. Number four, physical barriers. Physical barriers is a natural and environmental situation that hinders the sending of the information from the sender to the receiver. Defects in media, distractions in the environment, distance and physical disability, technological problems, and noise are the parts of physical barriers. Number five, systematic or systemic barriers. Systematic barriers to communication happen in a workplace or structures where there are disorganized or incorrect information systems and communication channels, or a lack of understanding of the rules and responsibilities for communication. Individuals in such workplace may experience confusions of their role in the communication process. Number six, attitudinal barriers. From the root word, attitude. An attitudinal communication barrier is a behavior or perceptions that hinder people from transmitting information effectively. Accusing or thinking someone of having a bad attitude who might as well bring attitudinal barrier in your workplace is an example of an attitudinal barrier. To avoid communication breakdown, Padilla et al. in 2016 emphasized the following points. Effective communication is more about listening rather than talking. Listening means understanding the emotions and what the speaker wanted to communicate. When you listen very well, you can hear subtle intonations in someone's voice, understand the other person and make him feel heard and understood. Thus, build a stronger connection between the two of you. To become an engaged listener, you need to, number one, focus fully on the speaker. It means listening in an engagingly way and not constantly checking on your phone or preoccupied with something else. Staying focused is picking up the subtle intonation and nonverbal cues in a conversation. Apply the techniques of clarification and reflection to confirm what the other person is talking to avoid confusion. Number two, do not interrupt. Listening is not waiting for your turn to oppose or retaliate. Concentrate on what someone is saying, not forming in mind what you're going to say next, and speakers often read your facial expressions and that your mind is wandering elsewhere. Number three, try to set aside judgment or bias. To communicate effectively with someone is not agreeing or liking with their ideas, values, or opinions to please them. It is setting aside your judgment by keeping back criticism to understand the speaker fully. This attitude often leads to a connection between you and the speaker. Number four, show your interest in what is being said. Body language is essential in a conversation like occasionally nodding, smiling, and making sure that you are, that your appearance is open and inviting. Verbal comments like yes or uh-huh will also encourage the speaker to continue. And lastly, number five, give feedback. If you are disconnected at some point, try to reflect what has been said by rephrasing it. You may say, what I'm hearing is, or sounds like you are saying. Simply repeating the speaker's exact words sound hypocritical and unintelligent. Ask questions for clarification. You may say, what do you mean when you say, or is it what you mean? Number two, be attentive to nonverbal signals. You send messages through words, gestures, and body language. This includes tone of voice, facial expressions, and silence, eye contact, hand, arm, and leg postures. The way you look, listen, move, and react to another person tell them more about how you're feeling than words alone ever can. According to Bernardo in 2016, he suggested the following tips to better improve nonverbal reading communication. 
Number one, be aware of individual differences. People come from different countries and cultures that they tend to use different nonverbal signs in communication. When you read body language signals, you have to take into consideration the age, culture, religion, gender, and emotional state. Number two, consider nonverbal communication signals as a group. You need to pay attention to all the nonverbal signals you received eye contact, tone of voice, and body language. Consider also the signals as a whole to understand better the person. Points for improving how you deliver nonverbal communication. Number one, use nonverbal signals that match up with your words. Nonverbal communication should emphasize what you communicated, not a contradiction to it. For example, shaking your head when you mean to say yes. Number two, adjust nonverbal signals according to the context. When talking to a child, the tone of your voice should be different when you're talking with an adult. Likewise, you have to consider the emotional state and cultural background of the person you are communicating. Number three, use body language to express positive feelings. When you are nervous about situation, let's say a job interview, important presentation, or first date, for example, positive body language to signal confidence should be applied. Number three, keep stress in check. To communicate effectively, you need to be in control of your emotions. Stress will lead you to misinterpret other people, transmit unclear or unpleasant nonverbal signals, and create unhealthy knee-jerk reactions. Number four, assert yourself. Be direct and assertive in expressing your feelings, thoughts, and needs. Being assertive does not mean you have to be aggressive and demanding. All right, we are done with the discussion. At this point, you will see another icon saying what's more. This comprises activities for independent practice to solidify your understanding and skills of the topic. So, what you're going to do now is to grab your pen and your paper and answer activity 3, read and tell. Please read the instructions carefully, okay? And answer directly. Okay. If you are done with activity three, in your module, you will see this icon saying, what I have learned. This includes questions or blank sentence or paragraph to be filled in to process what you learned from the lesson. Okay, so for activity four, I can feel it. So in your paper, you use familiar emoticons and smileys that you could associate with the following statements indicated in your module to avoid communication breakdown. So you just need to choose from the emoticons in your modules and then answer that from 1 until 10. Okay. After you do so, this will be the last activity. Okay. Then, what you need to do is, again, grab a pen and paper, and we are going to answer Activity 5. Let's try it out. Okay? In your module, an icon says what I can do. It means this section provides an activity which will help you understand your new knowledge or skills into real-life situations or concerns. In your module, you will see a table with three columns. First column is the barrier. Second column is the scenario. And the last column is how to overcome these barrier and scenario. Now, in this activity, you need to complete the table by giving the corresponding solution to overcome each barrier to avoid communication breakdown. Okay? So, if you are done with that activity, you may now proceed to the next one, which is the final 
face. The assessment. In this part, this is a task which aims to evaluate your level of mastery in achieving the learning competency. In a separate sheet of paper, you may answer directly the assessment. This is a multiple choice. Choose the letter of the best answer. All right. So you need to answer items number 1 until 15. Good luck, students. I know you can do it. All right, so you're done with the assessment, and now let's proceed to the last but not the least activity, okay? In order for us to attain the objectives, you need to answer this activity. For activity 7, you need to sharpen your skills. In a maximum of a 500-word essay, give your idea on how communication skills help you as a senior high school student cope with the challenges with school, work, relationships, and social interactions. Good luck, students! Well done! Great job, you guys! I hope that you learned a lot from this video presentation. If you have questions or clarifications, please feel free to send me a message. See you on the next lessons. God bless and keep up, dear learners!